Welcome to a new episode of Extreme Reloading. This is part two of Project 124. And of course, we're loading and testing 124 grain bullets in the 9mm Luger. My first test today is going to be with the FNX. I'm going to be shooting the 124 grain Hornady XTP. This, if you saw our previous episode, this is the round that we just worked up using Alliance Unique Smokeless Powder. Then, I'm going to fire the same load, the same combined overall length settings from my uh, bullet seating die and crimp die, but that bullet is the Spear Gold Dot, also 124 grains. And then finally, I'm going to be shooting another 124 grain bullet, which is the Sierra V-Crown. Then I'm going to switch guns. Do the exact same test with the Beretta 92FS. In our last uh, test of these different 9mm pistols, we were shooting a 115 grain Lehigh Extreme Penetrator, and we saw a huge difference uh, in the accuracy or precision between several different 9mm pistols. We'll see if that holds true with these jacketed hollow point 124 grain. Let's go ahead and get started and see how this all runs. One, eleven seventy three. Eleven sixty six. It's not doing too bad. Eleven seventy one. I think I hurried that one. Very similar velocities. And sixty five, yeah. Okay, that's five from the Spear Gold Dot. Standard deviation was 11. That's not bad for a pistol cartridge. Now, this is the Sierra V Crown. In all other ways, it's loaded identical. Eleven thirty six. Excellent standard deviation dropped to seven point five with these. We'll go up and take a look at how we did and change out the target. And then we're going to repeat this whole process using the Beretta 92. From what I'm seeing, I think this is doing a really nice job. Here we go. can see it making some nice holes in that target. This one actually is interesting. It shot 
um, a little bit higher, and this time to the right, in contrast to what the XDPs did, based on what I can see from here. Now this target is at 15 yards. Um, so it's a pretty good test, I think, uh, for a pistol. See how we did here. Now the standard deviation on these rounds was 12.4. These rounds are extremely consistent. In every case, I'm loading CCI uh, brass. Exactly the same powder charge, exactly the same primers, very, very consistent primer seating, very consistent bullet seating, and so on. So this is a pretty good test of what this gun and the FN likes better or worse. Let's go ahead and fire five rounds now with the Sierra V crowns. Eleven forty three. Eleven eighty seven. That's a big jump. We're supersonic all the way across. That's really good. Eleven forty three. 1169, we're getting quite a bit of variability round to round on muzzle velocities, and I don't really like that. 1157, that's my five. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Let's go ahead and take a look at these results and break it all down. You know, I am really happy with how the Sierra V-Crown turned out from the um, Beretta 92FS. This represents a very accurate and precise round. And what I mean by that is a measure of precision really is the extreme spread while accuracy really is describing how close those rounds came to impacting the bullseye. So let's start by looking a little bit more closely at our measure of precision. In other words, extreme spread. What you're going to see is that across the board that FN just did not perform anywhere near, for the most part, did not perform anywhere near as well as the Beretta. And what I'm showing here is, for instance, the Beretta, shooting the Hornady XTP bullets, had a 3.1 inch extreme spread on a five shot group and 1.3 inch extreme spread with the four shot group. The reason why I'm showing a four shot group as well as the full five shot group is because you may recall, may have heard me call one of my shots uh, that I hurried the shot, and indeed, when I was watching the footage, that hurried shot impacted quite low. Now, I don't know for certain that I had a hurried shot for each of these groups, but if we allow a four-shot group for one of them, I wanted to see what the difference would be if we allowed a four-shot group for all. But overall, if we can't justify looking at a four-shot group and we have to look at the entire five-shot group, which certainly seems fair to me, then the Sierra V-Crown from the Beretta 92 easily shot the best with a 1.5-inch five-shot group. Turning our attention to the accuracy, what I've done here is I have scored that bullseye target and any round that impacted the orange bullseye, got a full 10 points, and there's a smaller inner circle on that orange bullseye that I'm calling the dead bullseye, so that's the X. So for instance, again, the Beretta shooting the Hornady XTP received a score of 49 out of 50, 
with three of its shots impacting the X. The Spear Gold Dot had also a 49 for its overall score, but none of the rounds impacted the dead bullseye, so zero in the X. And then the winner for our Accuracy Award is the Sierra V Crown, a full 50 points with four of the five rounds in the X. The next thing that I want to look at is consistency. And this is the results from the Lab Radar chronograph. And I'm really not too concerned about the actual velocity or the average velocity. What I'm really looking at here for the consistency is the standard deviation. And that's that number in parentheses. And once again, the round producing the tightest consistencies or the lowest variability was the Sierra V Crown, but not in the Beretta 92, but rather in the FNX. If we're looking strictly at the Beretta, then the lowest variability was shot using the Spear Gold Dot with a standard deviation of 12 feet per second. Now, whenever we get down to single digits of standard deviation, like what we saw with the Sierra V Crown at 8 feet per second, you're not going to be able to get much better than that. In fact, that's really impressive for a handgun uh, to produce such tight consistencies. The one comment I'd like to make about the average muzzle velocities is that they acted exactly as I suspected that they would. Remember we were talking in a previous episode about case intrusion and the fact that the Hornady XTP was the longest bullet that we're shooting in Project 124 and we were expecting it to achieve the highest pressures and correspondingly the highest muzzle velocities. That was indeed the case. The shorter bullets when seated at the same combined overall length would have less case intrusion and so in theory they should be slightly slower in velocity and in fact they were. So these results followed exactly what I was expecting. Now earlier this season in Extreme Reloading we shot the 115 grain Lehigh Extreme Penetrator and kind of put it up against a 115 grain Hornady XTP bullet. And that test was done also at a target 15 yards away and those results provide us an interesting opportunity to compare the 115 grain bullet to the 124 grain bullet, both of which were Hornady XTPs. So our five shot group with the Hornady XTP had an extreme spread of 1.179 inch. And that group coming out of the 115 grain bullet beats the Sierra V Crown Spear Gold Dot and the Hornady XTP at 124 grain. So based on those results, the Hornady XTP had the best precision that we've shot out of that same Beretta 92. When we look at consistency, the Hornady XTP had an average velocity of just over 1200 feet per second and a standard deviation of 18.7. Pretty much identical uh, variability compared to the Sierra V Crown. So if you really want to shoot the Hornady XTP, the 115 grain bullet looks like it gives us better performance overall in that same bullet style. If on the other hand you kind of look at the advantages of a 124 grain bullet, then my inclination would be to go with the Sierra V Crown. But even if you chose the Spear Gold Dot 124 grain bullet, it's not going to be a bad choice at all. As always, bear in mind that this is really looking at the results over one session, five rounds being fired in each of those different groups. And if we repeated this, it may not be exactly the same end result. But nonetheless, this does give us some insight into how these different bullets perform and clearly shows us that just because we're dealing with a 124 grain bullet, we cannot expect the same performance from the Hornady XTP, Spear Gold Dot, or Sierra V Crown. This also once again clearly demonstrates the effect 
of different guns, different pistols shooting these rounds. Here we had the FNX that really did okay, but nowhere near as good across the board as the Beretta. The exception to that rule, though, was that the FN had a smaller five-shot group with the Hornady XTP than did the Beretta, about half an inch smaller in extreme spread. So the final take-home message is that when you're working up a load for your gun, you're probably going to have to try a couple different bullets, a couple different weights of those bullets, work those rounds up very carefully, and assess them very carefully as well. The final decision on these bullets really is not complete yet, though, because they're all going to come back when we look at terminal performance and firing these things into the ballistic gelatin. Hey, thanks again for watching, and in just a couple weeks, we have another episode coming right up.